Today I'm going to talk about how to insert an egg into a file or a viola body. I'm going to talk about the methods I'm using and I'm going to show you how to use the basic tools. Enjoy the video and if you want to subscribe to my channel, hit the subscribe button and keep updated with all the trade secrets I'm sharing. First step, I have my neck block here already attached with the fingerboard and my fingerboard is completely finished. So I don't take it off anymore and I'm going to draw my measurements of the heel onto the end grain. I know how wide my uh, crown is going to be. It's going to be on this particular viola, it's going to be 21.5 millimeters. So I know my measurements here. Let's draw them. So, so here I have the end grain of my neck block and it's here I'm going to draw my measurements and drawing my heel on there. Before I do that, I want to explain you something what I've done with the gluing surface there. So you see, and now you see it, so you see I have my scroll ending there and then here is a little step. It's half a millimeter on my treble side and on my base side actually it's not existing. So what I've done is I raised my treble side and this is done because I would like to end up with a bridge which is more symmetrical than um, if you would not do it. Uh, everybody knows that um, your E string which is running here is lower, uh, it's, it's closer towards the fingerboard than the B string. So it's if you have an equal step or no step at all you will end up with a bridge which is slanting down on the treble side. By raising the treble side I will end up with a more symmetrical bridge. So let's see how this is um, showing up in the drawing I'm making. So let's start drawing the heel. So first we start by laying out the center line of our heel. So we start with our straight surface there and if you don't have a next step um, it's just 90 degrees on this uh, gluing surface there. So because I have raised my treble side it will be 90 degrees on this line here. Here you see I make a gap of half a millimeter so it's 90 degrees on this line. First of all let's start with the center of my fingerboard. For this I'm taking a divider and I am just, I put it there, aside there and make a mark and put it aside there and make a mark and if it's the same mark then you know that you're in the middle. So voila, there is my center. Then I take my ruler and um, a little uh, needle to make a scribe line. I always find making marks with a needle is much more accurate than with a pencil. So I have my center there and I'm gonna raise my ruler half a millimeter there so I know I know I'm off center. Voila. And make a scribe line. Voila. I'm gonna go in there with a pencil so you can see it better. Here we go. Then I'm gonna divide this line with the measurements I need. So first of all we have wood which is above the top and um, so I'm gonna have a next step because my treble is raised half a millimeter I'm gonna have 6.5 here and 7 millimeters there so if I'm gonna if I draw here a measurement of 6.5 I'm gonna end up on the other side with 7 so 6.5 it's there Voila. And then if I draw a seven there, 
I know my mark here. So this is my first point I'm gonna make. And then actually, then we have the thickness of our channel of the top. And on this viola, I have a channel thickness which is three millimeters. So I'm gonna put a mark at three millimeters. And very easy to do this is also with your divider. Set it at three millimeters. And there you go. There's the other one. So I have my channel there. And then I have, and if you see here, so what I'm talking about is, this is where we're gonna insert the neck. So we have the wood of the neck above the top. Then we come we, we, we come across the top itself, the channel, which is three millimeter. And then we have this distance there. And on this particular, particular viola, it's uh, 36 millimeters. So I take my divider and I'm gonna, and it's a bit difficult with the camera and the angle, but it's just, you can take your divider and just set it right here I'm gonna just check it voila I'm gonna make this mark here voila and to show it better so here is the other mark so actually if you look here so now we are on the inside of our crown but I want to make, take my, I want to draw my, the, the measurement of my crown. I want to draw it on the outside actually. So I'm gonna also, I'm gonna measure my, um, my crown here, the thickness. And I know, I know it's five millimeters. So I'm gonna draw another five millimeters here. And then I can put my uh, width of my crown on there. So another five millimeters. Here we go. And now I want to end up with a crown. I want to end up with a crown of 21.5 millimeters. So my crown on the outside, when I'm finished, I'll have my crown here and the width of the crown will be 21.5. Because this whole, um, this whole insert is actually a dovetail, I have to add one millimeter to the width here to end up on the outside with a crown of 21.5. So I'm gonna draw a measurement there of 22.5. So it's 11 and two and a half, voila. So here, left and right, I have two points, now, two marks, and now I can finish my heel there. Voila, and I'm gonna trace it with a pencil so you can see it better. There we go. This is my heel. So now I can start removing the excess wood here and also all of this and finish it. I'm gonna show you two ways to remove the excess wood around the fingerboard. First, doing a quick, jo quick job, I'm using the bandsaw. If you're looking to have a bandsaw, it's very quick, it's very efficient. If you don't have a bandsaw or you don't want to use your bandsaw, I'm gonna show you a way how to do it by hand with the saw. I'm gonna try to aim the camera for the bandsaw and then we can start sawing. Okay. 
So here is my vise and I'm gonna use this block to protect my fingerboard. Voila. Like this. Now, be very careful when you cut this with a saw that you don't cut into your fingerboard. It will ruin your fingerboard and yeah, it will be a shame of doing it. So, I'm gonna show you. So I start here. And I stay away, probably a, a good centimeter away from the fingerboard to be safe. Did I just say a centimeter? Of course, I meant a millimeter. So here, I actually I start on the heel. I draw a line. I draw a line on the back of it. So here you can see my the line of my heel, and I just I draw the line there, 90 degrees. It's to be safe, to be to see how far I can saw. Voila, here we go. Everything is sewn. So now I take my a chisel, and this is a chisel with a actually a gouge with a flat bottom side. So it comes very handy by removing it this way. So don't take too much wood because you see the little blocks they break. So you have to see how how they break and how the fiber is breaking so you can predict how it will break. And here on the heel itself, I'm gonna leave, I'm not gonna go with the flat chisel, I'm gonna plane it. All of this wood, I'm gonna chisel it away with the flat chisel and make it nice and flush with the fingerboard. So I put my flat chisel flat on the fingerboard and take the last pieces of wood, which are still higher than the fingerboard itself. So for now, this is, this is done, and now I'm gonna show you how to play the heel. So, most of the time I turn it, and I'm planing it from this side up. Very important now is, when you start planing this surface, we want to make a, a dovetail connection, actually. So we have our fingerboard, which is running from small to bigger, of course, then our heel itself also runs in this direction. So actually the top here will be smaller than the bottom there. That's also the reason why I was doing the one millimeter more when I was making the, the measurements there. I took 22.5 instead of 21.5. That's because here, it will run smaller towards the top there. So, for protection. And now I can start planing this.
here you can see I have my plain neck and you see I have a very nice connection with the fingerboard actually there is you can't feel it and that's what you want the surface the plain surface is completely flat so I check it with the straight edge and it's perfect so it makes life easy when we start making the, the insert the connection with the body here you can see I hit my mark there, the 22.5, and now I can start transferring the width onto my body. So we can start the insert into the viola. Here you see I have the top of my body. I have my center line of the back and my center line of the front, and I have my planed neck. You still know we made, I made those points there, and they resemble actually those inside points or the insides there and there. So it's here that I'm gonna take my measurement. The top for the here and then on the bottom, on the crown part. So what I do, I use a divider and I'm gonna place it right in the center and take the width. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go a little bit inside, so it gives me a smaller reading on my body than the actual measurement. And this is for safety, we can always make it bit bigger later. So left and right, it's dead in the center, so I can mark it left. And right, so I have two points there. The same on the crown part. I stay half a millimeter inside. Check left and right, it's the same. And make a point there. And I make a point there. So now I have four points. And they resemble the heel there. Another measurement that we have to make is how deep the neck is going to be inside the instrument. So this I'm going to we measure it. I'm going to measure it from the top of the edge, and I'm going to measure it inside. On a viola, on this viola, it's seven millimeters. So the same. I'm going to set my divider at seven, and I'm going to use it to make two points. So seven millimeters. Here I see how wide my neck is and I place my divider right there and I make a mark there, put my divider there and make a mark. So now you can see I have two points left and right and this resembles how deep the neck will be inserted inside the instrument. So I make a very nice mark there. I'm not gonna try to cut completely through the top there, but just a nice and straight mark. So now you see from one point to the other a decent cut there. First thing is removing this edge. So Most of the time I take my body, my viola body and or violin and I, between my legs, you see I protected my bench there with a piece of rubber and I'm working like this. It's very comfortable. So now I have my marks, I know how wide it's gonna be and I'm just gonna start making every half millimeter, every millimeter cuts into my edge there. This makes it very easy 
to remove it. Of course, you have to watch out. Don't go too far, because you will end up with a gap. Voila. You see me doing this very quickly actually. Just when you start doing it and it's your first time, be very careful. Um, this is not my first time, so I know what I can expect. But be warned, just take your time. So now that my edge is removed, only my edge, I can take my ruler and connect those two dots. So I place it right on my mark there, and here you can see it's connecting my mark there. And then I'm able to cut through the sides of the viola. I'm not trying the same, I'm not trying to cut completely through my sides, just making a decent mark there. So now you see I have very, two very clear marks of how my neck will fit in there. Now I will continue removing the top completely towards the cut there and then I will start removing the sides and part of the top block. Take a flat chisel and I'm gonna connect this part with the chisel and do the same on the other side. Have to make the mark a bit longer. Up. And now I will start. removing this. Cutting through the inlay can be a bit tricky, but take your time and press your chisel in there and eventually it will you will be able to cut it through. Don't use too many too much force. You can imagine if I use too much force force in this direction and things go wrong, you can damage your, your top. So, again, take your time. Just start removing the inlay there. Up. Voila, and now I can start removing the last part of the top. Here you can see, maybe I will try to show you, I have a pin there, which I use for positioning the top onto the ribs. So it's a bit tricky to cut it through because it's end grain. Just a very sharp, sharp chisel is handy. Voila. I'm not completely through the top, so I'm not gonna use my knife now to make it deeper here. I'm just gonna use my chisel because it's straight and flat and I can keep it straight and I'm just gonna push this deeper inside the top. Gives me a nice straight edge there. If I would do it with a, with a knife and I would keep cutting there, 
I would probably undercut this surface. And it's, yeah, it's very annoying for later, so. So here we go. Here you see I've reached to my top block. So now I'm gonna just clean my edges a little bit. This whole gap is still too small, of course. But anyway, I want to have clean edges. There we go. Voila. So here you see my top is removed and now I can start removing the ribs. So first, what I do is I cut in an angle and I cut along there. So I'm taking a small part of the rib off just to never take too much wood. I'm very careful towards the end because I don't want to dam damage my back with my chisel. The same here, I didn't cut completely through my ribs. So what I do here, I take my chisel and I come from top and I press my chisel straight in there. It's a bit difficult with the camera, but I'll try to manage it. Let's see if it's also possible with the with a knife. Why not? Voila. So I do this until I reach the top lock. So here you can see the top lock coming through. And now I can re remove all the inside wood. So, the, rib is, the ribs are gone, and this is my top block. Now to remove my top block, it's very straightforward. I'm gonna push my chisel along the edges, straight in there, and then I'm gonna remove my top block just straight, so I don't start with undercutting it. So my chisel, if you look like this, is gonna go in straight. I'm not gonna cut like this, because if I already start doing this, maybe my angle is already too much for a nice uh, inclination of the of the neck. So keep it straight that there is enough wood on the back so we can we have enough room there to align the neck properly. So here we go, you see I removed my top lock, straight, cleaned up the edges and now the next part starts. 